What the heck? You are living off my money, and yet you are making me eat such disgusting food. To my horror, my husband suddenly threw hot soup at me. I had enough. Fine, I'm leaving. The next day, he called me nonstop, to which I paid no attention. As a result, he ended up in a pit of hell. My name is Kathy. I'm a 28-year-old homemaker. When I got married to Eric just last year, I quit my job. Now I work hard taking care of the household and supporting him as much as possible. I keep our home squeaky clean and try to be creative with my cooking every day. Eric works diligently and earns a decent income for us. While we don't have an affluent lifestyle, we live comfortably and often go out together on his days off. We first met at work. Although we were in different departments, we hit it up during an office party and grew closer over time. He was a salesperson, always busy and constantly on the move. He seemed cheerful and reliable, and I secretly admired him. So when he first spoke to me, I was ecstatic. After that, he continued to initiate conversation with me at work, and we exchanged our phone numbers. He started inviting me out, and soon he told me that he had feelings for me, and we became an item. I never expected such a turn of events, and it made me realize that life was full of surprises. Our relationship progressed smoothly. We kept it a secret in the office. Which added more fire to our romance. He was so loving and sweet during our courtship, and I always cherished the fun times we had together. About a year into our relationship, he popped the question, "I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me?" I was over the moon at his proposal. Of course, I said yes, and we decided to tie the knot. I wanted to get married in my twenties. So it was my wish come true. We wasted no time introducing each other to our families, and then had a beautiful wedding ceremony. We weren't into anything lavish, so we had a modest and budget-friendly one. It suited us perfectly, and became a memorable and blissful wedding. Whenever I look at the wedding photo that's displayed in our living room, it reminds me of that day, making me smile. I remember how thrilled I was about the start of our new life together. Our honeymoon period was as euphoric as it could be. Even now, after a year of being married, we are so in love, and I have no doubt that we'll continue to have happy days ahead. Though, Eric's been acting strange lately. It's hard to explain, but he doesn't seem interested in having a conversation with me. Even when I try to initiate it, his responses are short and simple. Oh, you're home! I found a good deal on chicken, so I made fried chicken today. Great. How is work? Okay. He doesn't engage in conversation, and I've started to find it difficult to bring up topic. Our dinner table becomes uncomfortably silent when it's completely quiet. You can even hear the sounds of cars passing by outside. I then turn on the TV while trying to engage him in conversation, but he doesn't seem interested, and quickly retreats to his room after eating. As I wash the dishes alone in the kitchen, I wonder what has gotten into him all of a sudden. I'm totally bewildered. Even when I press him to talk, he only gives me vague responses. And makes a displeased face. When I get reactions like this, it only makes it even harder to initiate conversation, and I find myself constantly trying to read his mood. Then he starts complaining about my housework. Jeez, what was this dinner? It's too simple. I'm exhausted from working my butt off every day. Give me more meat. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I thought it might be a good idea to have some fish for a balanced diet some. He slams the table so hard and cuts me off. I flinch at the sudden outburst of his anger. He glares at me and starts yelling. Don't argue with me! You're living on my earnings! Listen to what I say without question! He shouts with a bright red face. I'm stunned seeing him like this for the first time. What's wrong with you? Why are you getting so angry? God damn it! Weren't you listening to me? Don't talk without my permission! Seriously? Shouldn't a husband and wife be equals? You are being arrogant! Saying stuff like that while I'm the one providing for you! You need to be disciplined! Disciplined? What do you mean? I'm going to control the food budget. It's going to be $100 this month. Huh? That's too little. I can't even cover one person with that. Don't you dare talk back every time. You will have to make it work. But if it's that low, even you won't be able to eat properly. I will buy what's lacking myself. While you prepare dinner for the both of us, make sure it's something I find satisfying. If he doesn't meet my standards, I will further reduce the budget. But... He wears a triumphant look on his face. He seems to enjoy the idea of having control over me. What's making him act this way? I begin to feel anxious about whether I can continue this marriage. Then, I wonder what will happen when I'm alone. If I end up divorcing him, will I be able to survive on my own? Going back to my previous job isn't an option because it means working at the same company as him. I'm not confident that I could find a new job easily. While I could manage to get by with part-time work, it would be quite challenging. Besides, I can't give up on us before trying to fix whatever the issue is. Even though he has been treating me unpleasantly, I can't just fall out of love suddenly after being together for some time. Also, it's only been a year since we got married, so I don't want to consider divorce as an option just yet. However, his attitude hasn't changed after that. He has been as cold and domineering as ever. I take a radical approach, making sure that we can get by on just $100 for grocery. For instance, I use cheap ingredients like pasta and rice to add more volume alongside me. And I often make one pot dishes to increase the portion size. Thanks to these efforts, I'm managing to cut down our food expenses significantly. Even Eric is surprised to see me working so hard to save. I'm amazed that you're doing quite well. Keep it up. He praises me. I wish he could just increase the budget a bit more. I'm afraid that mentioning it might lead to further reduction, so I remain silent and not provoke him. I've also started taking on a side job online during the daytime. Regardless of what happens in the future, I think it would be good to have the ability to earn money on my own. I search for suitable jobs for me and try a variety of them. Among them, there is one where I write articles for a blog. I've been writing about various genres, and it turns out to be something I'm quite good at. There are many introduction-type articles, like money-saving tips and recommended movies and plays. Surprisingly, I've been engrossed in it and thought of starting my own blog. So I opted to set up my own blog, even though it cost me some initial money. I write miscellaneous articles, aiming to provide some useful information to the readers. At first, the number of views were obviously low, and it didn't generate any income. Then, it gradually started to attract more readers, and the ad revenue increased. Even earning just a few dollars from my own blog makes me incredibly happy. I've been writing articles non-stop, and before I knew it, I've written hundreds of them. As the number of articles increases, so does the income. Meanwhile, 
Eric's been coming home later, and there are more days when he doesn't eat dinner at home. So, the time I normally spend on cooking and cleaning up afterward becomes open, which gives me more time to focus on my blog. Having something I can passionately pursue, along with the confidence from earning my own money, reduces my stress. Despite receiving a minimal food budget, I've been managing to provide proper dinners by adding my own earnings. I'm leading a fulfilling life, but my happiness seems to bother Eric. His attitude toward me is getting worse now. You always have that annoying, cheerful smile pasted on your face. Unlike you, I work every day, enjoying unpleasant situations, you know. Being a full time homemaker, just doing housework and having a leisurely time seems carefree and nice, huh? But do you understand that you can live this way because of my money? He shouts, his face red with anger. I know better than to provoke him when he's being unreasonable. Yes, I do. I know I can't live without you. If you understand, then stop acting in a way that irritates me. Yes, I'm sorry. When I become more submissive, he gradually improves his mood, and further arguments become less frequent. Sometime after that, I make a discovery when I'm about to do the laundry. It's a receipt from a designer's brand store. Found in Eric's pants pocket. What's more, it's for a woman's handbag. I can't fathom what's going on. I suddenly haven't received such an expensive bag. That's when it hit me. My birthday is coming up soon. Could it be that he has secretly bought it for me? The thought excites me. Despite his recent cold shoulders, he still cares for me. From then on, I've been using my earned income to add a little extra to our food budget, allowing for more luxurious meals. He seems content, and he happily comments, "We've been having some delicious dinners lately." About a week passes, and my birthday arrives. However, when I say good morning, he simply responds with a casual greeting, and says nothing more. I wonder if he has a surprise planned for the evening, so I keep quiet. For dinner, I think I'm making steak and buying some slightly expensive cuts of meat. When he returns home, I prepare the meat and serve it with a nice bottle of bread. Whoa, steak tonight, huh? Even a red wine. This is great. I thought we'd treat ourselves a bit tonight. Good call. Keep it coming," he says that with enthusiasm, as he eagerly digs into the steak. But wait, nothing else? I watch in disbelief as he continues eating without saying anything. Then, he seems to notice my gaze and wears a confused expression. What's wrong? Aren't you eating? Oh well, do you remember what day it is today? Hmm. He ponders for a moment, and then gives up. No, I don't. Was there something special? It's my birthday. Oh, oops, sorry, I forgot. He looks slightly awkward, realizing he has forgotten his wife's birthday. I've been really busy at work, you know. I mean, I even forget my own birthday. I don't remember until someone reminds me. So, it's your birthday, huh? Happy birthday! Let's make a toast. He clinks his wine glass against mine. Then he goes back to enjoying his steak. At this moment, I became certain that branded handbag he bought isn't for me. It's for someone else. I made up my mind to hire a private investigator to look into his affair. Within about two weeks, they gathered plenty of evidence confirming his infidelity. Indeed, he's having an affair, and there are multiple pictures of him going to hotels with his mistress. I've anticipated it, but when I actually confirmed the truth, 
it is truly shocking. Since then, I've been preparing for a divorce from Eric. I consult with a lawyer, pack my things, and get ready to return to my parents' house. At this point, I don't want to cook decent meals for a cheating husband, so I quickly lower the quality of our meal. Initially, he looks puzzled as he eats those simple meals, but when another frugal dinner follows the next day, his mood worsens further. Hey, haven't our dinners been awful the past few days? You were serving generous stuff like steaks before. There's not enough money. We have to make do with a tight food budget. What did you say? His face turns crimson, clearly not liking my tone. Who do you think you are, giving an attitude to me? Again? Are you going to play the authoritarian husband? What you're doing is nothing but mental abuse. There's no respect in that. Don't you dare! Are you insulting me? What the heck? You are living off my money, and yet you are making me eat such disgusting food. To my horror, he suddenly throws soup at me. I thought you'd behave yourself for a while, but you are getting cocky again. I won't give you a single cent for food anymore. He shouts angrily. I have reached my breaking point. Fine, I'm leaving. Yeah, get out! I'd already packed my bags, so I walked out immediately. I get into my car and head to my parents' house. They already knew about my plans to divorce, so they welcomed me with open arms. The next day, Eric bombards me with calls, but I ignore them all. He probably didn't believe that I'd actually leave. Perhaps, he thinks I would spend some time away and eventually return on my own. Not in a million years. As a result, he will end up in a pit of hell. I quickly find a good divorce lawyer. I've shown proof of his affair and explain in detail about the mental abuse I had received. Not to mention the incident with the soup, which, while not boiling hot, was hot enough to warrant as a salt charge. Eric and I have been communicating through our respective lawyers. He's surprised by the extent of my demands and the evidence I provided for the affair. Initially, resistant, he came to realize that he couldn't overturn the situation and he had to accept the divorce and compensation. I spoke to my ex-colleagues who still work with him which had the intended consequence of exposing his true nature in his office. While he has portrayed himself as a wholesome character, the revelation of his temper and violence has resulted in others keeping their distance, and his reputation has suffered a considerable blow. Under these circumstances, it inevitably becomes difficult for him to climb the career ladder and it's safe to say that his path to success has been closed off. Frankly, I think it serves him right, and it's a coincidence of his own action. By the way, my income from the blog has started to exceed thousand dollars per month, and I can now cover the bare necessities of life with my blog earnings alone. In addition to that, I work a part-time job three days a week, and with both sources of income, I'm earning around $1,800 steadily. Since I live with my parents, I can save most of it, increasing my assets. I'm not planning on getting into dating or marriage anytime soon. Instead, I want to cherish the time with my parents while dedicating myself to my work.